Winter is coming. Winter is coming. Winter is coming. What? Oh, yeah, sorry, it's just a thermostat. Winter is coming. But it's fucking July. It's not coming fast enough! What's up all you sexy nerds, Grizzly McB here, and we're back with a mini boss episode, episode number 115, 115, with Nerdist New Sexy Entertainment, and I am joined today by the one and only... Motherfucking Wildfire One! <laughs> I've been I've been calling myself a motherfucking all day, so... Motherfucking... A.K.A. Hodor! Hodor! <laughs> Yeah, and, um, and in case you haven't figured it out by the intro and by what we've been saying, our podcast today is on the Game of Thrones. And just so that we're not triggering anybody, uh, warning, lots of spoilers, spoilers are coming. So um, uh, about our, our intro... Special thanks. That music, that music, off the charts. And no, it is not from the Game of Thrones. It is a special little rendition, remake, if you will. Remix. From a, a, a good friend of Wildfire Ones. Tell us about this individual. Oh, I just asked him to do it for us. And of course, he's a great guy. Uh, F777, you guys uh, from Newgrounds, I know you know him. Uh, great guy he was awesome enough to do that for us and thanks again uh, Jesse Valentine you're the best now we won't get sued <laughs> you can find him on Newgrounds and YouTube when Wild first told me about this guy I was like you know I because he, he's done uh, some of the music for um, some of the stuff you used to do back in the day right oh yeah oh yeah him and I used to do all sorts and, of collabs Great guy. I've, really I've awesome. I've listened film. to a lot of his stuff. It's it's good. Check him out. They we'll put a link down here little, somewhere. Simple little plug for him helping us out with this episode. Great guy. So, well, let's just kind of jump right into it. Oh, there's a lot to jump into. I mean, season one, you get to meet, you know, you get to meet the Starks and you get to meet the Lannisters. The first season, you're like, oh, you 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 automatically fall in love with the Starks. Oh yeah. Because they seem to be the ones who have the honor and whatever. And the Lannisters kind of are, I mean, the first... The rich pricks. The rich pricks. The first episode is you get to see, like, Jamie Lannister and what's this fucking sister's name? I, I hate her so much I try and forget her. What, Cersei? Cersei. Yeah. yeah. They're fucking! And they're brother and sister! They're twins. Twin twinsies. Twin. Like, like you know, I saw that episode and I was like, HBO don't give a fuck no more. Like, they want to blow your mind. And I'm sure it was from the book because remember, Game of Thrones or World Boat, there are books. So like, I mean, I and I'm one of those guys that we were gonna have Minder on here, but she couldn't make it. She's the book nerd, and so is this guy. But I don't know if you've read the book, have you? No, I it's, didn't even know that there were books. Yeah, there were books. It's it's from a set of books. I, I didn't know that they were books before I started watching the show. Yeah. And then I started watching the show and uh, disappeared for like three weeks, just straight binge watched of it. Um, special thanks to Baby Girl of Doom for that. Mm -hmm. We'll just say DVDs. <laughs> and of course, um, my buddy over at Broader Minds, who, yeah. who started me off on it with the first DVD. So thanks for that. It starts off, you know, you get to meet, you literally get to meet these characters. Why, you, why don't you tell us about that, Grizz? Tell us about some of the well, characters. Let's see. With the Starks, there's uh, Jon Snow. There's Bran the Broken. <laughs> Bran the Broken, which is not known as that at first. And then yeah. there's Arya, um, the sister. Sansa, Rob Stark, Rickon. 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 Game of Thrones started in 2011. Can you believe that? Doesn't, that seems like so far away. Like it, I, I, I thought it was like 
I thought it started like I mean eight seasons. I guess that makes sense, but uh, yeah. it just didn't feel like it's that old. And that's another thing. Just in case you guys don't know, this was a HBO series off of HBO. Um, they were very, very, very protective of this series. So if yes. we say something bad, they'll probably keep. They'll, you'll never see us again. Oh, you'll see us. We'll just be on a different channel. HBO. <laughs> You can quote me on that. We're not getting monetized anyways. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> John Snow. John Snow doesn't have the last same last name as the Starks, of course, because he's a bastard. He, uh, yes. you know. And Rob Stark is actually the oldest. Yes. Uh, uh, but, Arya. Uh, you know they they don't really say it, but Rob Stark is like less than a year older than John. Oh yeah, they're not that really that far apart. And then Sansa's four or five years younger than Rob. Yeah. Arya's what, like two or three years younger. I think I want to say she him. was she was like ten or t- yeah she was about eight or no nine or ten maybe when when season one was when they appeared in season one at least the character yeah. was. Yeah. No, she was actually eight. Oh, see that makes sense. Even younger. Because I've I've watched no like her her as a person. Oh, she was eight years old. Yeah, because she's only um, 16 now, I think. She's not that old. She's by far not that yeah. old. Even in but even in the last season, she was... Like, like the funny thing now is, like, Fansa Stark and Arya Stark, yeah, they were sisters in the show, mm-hmm. but in real life, they are, like, best friends. They do everything well, they, together. They only had eight years or eight seasons of, of shows to get like acquainted and that's pretty cool. Yeah. Like, as far as the Starks go, we got that. Let's go Lannister. Okay, yeah. Lannister. You've got obviously uh, Cersei and Jamie, the um, brother-sister duo. twins. The brother-sister okay. duo. Yeah. And yeah. then you got and then Tyrion. You have, uh, Tyrion Lannister, a.k.a. Peter Dinklage. One of the best characters in the show. Peter Dinklage. Peter Dinklage. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> honestly, honestly, the yeah, Tyrion is probably one of the best characters. You, you fall and in love with Floppy Wiener. Floppy Wiener. Good. Okay. <laughs> God damn it! We're gonna be doing that throughout this whole thing. Floppy yep. Wiener. And then you've got um, the father, Tywin. You know. Amazing actor. Great. Played an bad amazing guy. bad guy. Great yeah. bad guy. Like you love to hate this character. But like Charles you can dance is an amazing guy. They gave him the perfect role. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. In he my can, opinion. He can play a lovable bad guy. Like there you could tell like he was trying in certain scenes you could tell he was trying to do the fatherly thing, like the best thing. But at the same time mm-hmm. he, he had to like follow the role the role of being a Lannister. There's one cousin who does have uh, a big Lancel. role. Lancel. Remember that name? He was the one that was sleeping with... Uh, Cersei. Cersei when Jamie was in prison. Yep. And missing. Later and then on. became the... What is it? The, the, the religious... Dumb, the religious... Fu- yeah, the stick. religious nut that fucking turned on his family. Mm-hmm. Like big time, yeah. But yeah, this. And then of course Joffrey Baratheon, the Lannister. Oh yeah. The bastard son. The, the demon literally spawn himself. Literally, all the children that 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 Cersei had were Jaime's kids. Like she never. Yeah. The guy she was married to the the king the the king on the throne at the time. What was his name? Robert Baratheon. Robert Baratheon. She was married to <laughs> Robert Baratheon. But none of their kids were his. They were all Jamie's. You know, all blonde hair. And and, and that was, I guess, like, like their trademark. All the kids were blonde. Everyone was blonde. You get to meet um, Joffrey in the first in the first season. I think even the first yes. episode he shows up. And, I mean, you look at this kid and you're just like, that's the devil himself. That that yeah. That is a spoiled, rotten fucking kid that you just want to backhand. Like, mm-hmm. and it just gets worse throughout the throughout the seasons. So, the first episode is more or less meet the characters. Okay, you get to meet these guys. You get to see who who you you know. You get your own opinions on who you like, who you don't like, 
and it the first episode ends and this is my opinion it was a great a great way to end the first episode because uh bran likes to climb as as a young bran before he's broken likes to climb and he ends up catching uh cersei and and jamie getting it on like this is a scene there's doggy style they're just doing it they're going crazy up in the tower up in the tower and he catches them they catch him catching them and uh jamie basically throws him off the tower the things I do for love is what he says, and throws him off the tower. And this is why we say then Brandon goes broke. Back to plowing his sister. Then goes yeah. back to plowing his sister. Yeah, I mean, Cersei was kind of cute. But I mean, you know, oh. tweaker bitch kind of way. Devil easy lay kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Hey, if you got if you got the itch, you gotta scratch it. I mean, your slut sister is always the way to go. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. Uh. Anyway, so that's the end of the first episode. And, of course, after watching that, you just want to binge watch it. You just want to keep watching it. And so let's talk about some of the plot points. The whole reason okay. the whole reason the Lannisters are down at uh, Winter, Winter, Winter Hold, is that what it's called? Winter, Winterfell. Winter, Winterfell. I keep wanting to say Hold. Winterfell, which is the, the Stark's home area. They're like lords of that area. So the whole reason the, the, the Lannisters are there is because they want to get Ned Stark to be the Hand of the King, who was uh, Robert Baratheon, who those two were friends. They fought together growing up. They were best of friends and whatnot. So the whole reason that they went there was to get Ned Stark to be the Hand of the King. Just, we'll just go through plot points because this is a big... It's eight, it's eight seasons long. The Lannisters convince... Not just the Lannisters. The King himself convinced Ned Stark to... Pretty much go from New York to California. Southern California to be the hand of the king. Yeah. Pretty much the pretty much the vice president. VP. Oh no. You know, because he needed help controlling his kingdom since, you know, he didn't really do it at all and spent his time drinking and whoring around. Obviously not uh, getting his wife pregnant, but uh, I mean. He was successful at creating uh, 30, 40, 50 bastard kids. Oh, um, yeah. He fucked around a lot. I mean, in, even in the first episode or the first season where, there, where they were more or less like partying, he was straight up making out with girls in front of Cersei just to piss her off. Yeah. And There was a lot of hatred between Robert Baratheon and Cersei. They hated well, each other. The reason he needed a new hand of the king was because the old hand of the king found out about all of his bastard children and was killed. Got killed. Well, he found out and about the bastard children slash the probably the origin of the children that are next to the throne. Finally, for sure, find out season... Two, I think? Two? Season three? Don't quote us on this. He was... The, the original hand of the king was killed by the Lannister. Mm-hmm. Ned Stark says okay i'll do it you know you've been my friend forever despite his wife telling him ned stark's and wife what's her name again caitlin caitlin yeah and the reason that ned stark agreed to it is because robert baratheon was never supposed to marry cersei land he was originally supposed to marry his sister ned stark's older sister yep and we'll get we'll get to that part in the future because put a pin in that because it gets good it gets so much better yeah. If you like drama, if you like, like, if you enjoy action, adventure, action, adventure drama. drama, Lord of the Rings shit, like, but 20 yeah. times more dramatic and like, like not, not, not necessarily into the world story, but end of like a kingdom, end of an era. That's probably, this is probably right up your fucking alley. Like, and they, yeah. the way they tell the story is so great. At least, at least on the show. This is, oh, well, so actually wait, let's talk about Holdor. He's a giant. He's a part giant. He's like half giant, isn't he? No, he's just extremely large. Okay, so he's got. He's um, a big dude, uh, and all he can say is Holdor. You know, that's all we hear him say: yeah. Holdor, 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 Holdor. He's like a Pokemon. Uh, pretty much, yeah. yeah. Um, and he works at Winterfell. Uh, it's where he was born. His family have always served House Stark. He's Bran's keeper, um, more or less. 
Yeah, pretty pretty much um, the children's protector. Yeah, uh, because he's seven foot tall, big old schlong, fifty pounds. Yeah, it, it, he walks out reason, naked at one point. The reason we're saying that is because, uh, yeah, he he walks out to you know the sacred quote unquote area um, in Winterfell, a butt ass naked, and his you know fourteen inch dick is just swinging. Um, Thank you. And, Thank you, HBO. Yeah. For yeah. that unforgettable and, uh, scene. Oh, my God. Can't burn and, that out of my memory. I, I don't remember who it was. They just kind of looked up, looked down. It was the wild, the wildling chick. Oh, yeah. Oh, then they, when they catch her. Uh, Asha. Asha, yeah, the wildling chick. She goes, she looks at him like basically eyeballs his yeah. dick. It, it looks up, looks in his eyes, looks down at his dick. Kind of tilts her head, smiles a little bit, looks back up. Hodor, go put clothes on. Well, no, she says that guy, that boy's got some giant in him or something. And that's why I say that. He's like part giant. I didn't know. <laughs> but it's hilarious. Yeah. She has another good but, character. Uh, but yes, yes. She, she really, really re- a really good redemption arc on her. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So throughout the duration of the the show, you know, you tell he's he's slow. Yeah, he's, he's um, mentally challenged. I think would be. But the way it's to say. not until I want to say. I want to say seven. Season, no, season six. I want to say towards the beginning of season six. So go to find out that he used to be a normal kid. He grew up with Robert Baratheon and with kind of name Ned Stark. It wasn't Holdor. And his name was Walden. So what happened is when he was younger, um, he was injured, got a very bad, bad head injury, um, and in his, you know, unconscious state, his vision or whatever he saw, this man told him to hold the door. So when he kind of came to, he just kept remembering hold the door that's all he would ever say he he started saying it so fast that it was just hodor 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 so that's what they started started calling him was hodor and there's a reason that he he saw this vision and we'll get of course get to that in the future so season one the plot points is uh ned becomes the hand of the king he learns he learns some shit uh more or less i don't know if he learned about what the old hand knew until what season two? He, no, he no he, no. You're right. He died season one, didn't he? He he learned about it very quickly. You know, looking back at the archives, realizing that the Baratheon family was all dark haired, and that the Lannister family was all blonde haired, very blonde, and pale, and that all of the Baratheon children were very blonde and pale, and, pale. and the fact that. Jamie Lannister didn't really like going anywhere or didn't like his sister going anywhere without him kind of put two and two together um, and then to strengthen the bond between families Sansa Stark the oldest daughter was promised to the oldest son of the king the demon yeah, that's an understatement. The yeah, he's uh, uh, which is Joffrey. Joffrey is fucking yeah. horrible. Uh, we can't even we we forgot about talking about the wolves, man. The dire wolves. Yeah, the dire, dire wolves. wolves are a big part of the story. Like they and find that's dire the wolf big, very beginning. Like the very beginning where they start talking about the White Walkers, you know. Yeah. So they uh, they find a uh, a carcass of a deer while out hunting. And uh, it had been, it, it looked like it had been attacked by a wolf, um, a very large wolf. Um, so they start tracking it. Uh, it was Jon Snow and Rob. Rob Stark and a bunch of the guys from Winterfell that were out on this hunt. Well, they tracked the, uh, the tracks to the carcass of a direwolf. 
with cubs. And it looked like it had been attacked by something more dangerous than a dire wolf. As they're getting ready to leave, uh, to go, you know, head back to Winterfell, they hear the puppies. Uh, and they go and they look, and sure enough, they find the dire wolf puppies. And, Just uh, enough for as many as the kids, like the, yep, the they family. Say, look, there's a gift for one of one for all of the Stark children. And as they're getting ready to leave, in all white, so it kind of crawls out, and uh, they go to kill it, and Rob goes, no, John, you're his kid too. This one's for you. You have it. <laughs> yeah. So each one of them got and, their and own dire wolf puppy. Turned out that that the runt that John Snow got ends up being the only one alive and the, the largest most by far. Badass of them all. Oh yeah. I mean Rob Ghost Starks was, was fucking, fucking awesome. Awesome. Rob Starks was yeah. fucking great too, but like Ghost was the shit, dude. Like Ghost was oh, yeah. okay. a slaughtered dire wolf foreshadow Ned Stark's death. Because what is the uh, that is, is true the crest of Winterfell. And that, House Stark. Oh fuck! I didn't even think and about that. Dire wolf. So I'm glad you looked that up. That is, yep. Yeah, and then on top of that, the dad or the parent of five cubs. Oh shit! Yeah. Ned and his six. Well, technically six. five children. Yeah. And then they find the sixth pup. And the last one they find went to John, John Snow. Snow. Mind is blown. That is oh, a very no, good the, fucking point. And the stag was gored, or the the dire wolf was gored by the stag. Oh. Which is the sigil for. The Lannisters. A breath. Oh, that's right. Well, that sucks. Lannisters was the lion. That's right. Wow. Mine. I didn't even think that far into it. Like, that is... Yeah. Robert Baratheon dying during a hunt. Or getting mortally injured by a wild boar. Uh, during one of his famous hunts um, and go to find out well, that drunk. he was drugged and drunk by that fucking cousin yeah um, and ended up dying Come effectively in. leaving his throne to Ned Stark until his oldest heir Joffrey no his oldest Air. I know, but everyone's going to say never, it never, never said, said Joffrey. Joffrey. It never did it say It said Joffrey. his oldest heir. So I think Okay. It, it's it's never specified, but I think he that was talking about Robert Baratheon knew that his quote unquote kids were not his kid. That is a good that's a good point because you're right. It does say oldest heir and maybe he was trying to give it to the the um the blacksmith kid. He wasn't the oldest. Who's the oldest? Didn't never say, but there was dozens of people from kids to grown men that were killed. Okay, okay. I didn't pay attention to that part. I just watched the biggest part that hit yeah. me there was the babies getting fucking killed. But we'll get to that. So, oh. so he gives so, Ned Stark this written, written thing, this written doc declaration stating that his oldest is going to be the one who succeeds heir. him. His oldest heir is going to be the one who succeeds him. And then basically dies. <laughs> dead. Yeah. Um, it was kind of sad to see him die. I, I kind of liked yeah, yeah. Robert Baratheon. He was an asshole, but he was like the asshole that you kind of... He didn't want to be the king either. He's just like, fuck. Yeah. Oh, and also in season one, 
um, John S Snow uh, swore an oath to the Night Watch. Oh yeah, he got he got picked up by the Night. That's a very big plot. Wants to be a ranger like his uncle, right? Yes, like his uncle, and where he meets uh, Sam. His Samwise Gamgee. His Samwise uh, Gamgee. Yes. Samwell Tarley. Samwell Tarley. Samwell Tarley, who is one of the ultimate main characters, um, and it's the the theory out there is that it is Samwell Tarley who is actually telling the story of the Game of Thrones. That makes sense. That's kind of cool. He, uh, and when you meet him, you kind of feel bad for him because he can't fight. He can't really do anything. He's just forced to be there, you know, because of his family. And he's just kind of, and everyone start, starts to bully him. And, of course, you know, here comes Jon Snow to the rescue. So. Okay, so the reason that Tyrion Lannister went to the Wall, which is where he met Jon Snow. Mm-hmm. Which is where the Night Watch proceed protecting the northern border of Westeros. He went up there to investigate the White Walker incident. Yeah, because uh, everyone was screaming that there was White Walkers again. That had not been seen in hundreds he... of years or something like that. Yeah, it was a long time. We'll say it that way. And that was cool that they met because... Um, there was some really good dialogue between Jon Snow and Tyrion Lannister in that scene. Yeah. Tyrion basically told Jon that he's a bastard and that he should live up to being a bastard and not try and hide it. And it's really good advice, I think, in general, because you are what you are. You can't necessarily hide from that. Tyrion was arrested by Caitlyn Stark, who believed him responsible for Bran's fall prompting the trial by combat um, up in the Vale, which is mm -hmm. uh, Caitlin's, Caitlin's sister, sister. Liza. Crazy that bitch. shit crazy, by the way. Let's talk about that first scene we see her. She has a 10-year-old. Her 10-year-old boy is still sucking at her titty. Literally. Yeah. Literally yeah. drinking milk. Yeah. Uh, Bron, who becomes Tyrion's best friend throughout everything uh, volunteers to fight for him to the death in which he wins in epic fashion oh yeah he becomes Tyrion's protector until they get back to King's Landing for money and pretty much stays there a rich fuck money. Ned was named protector of the realm until Joffrey came of age uh, which was like three days later, uh, even though he was what, like 14, 15. Well, it really uh, wasn't even come of an age. Jo they 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 fought that that writ that uh, Robert Baratheon. Yeah. They um, they were like, oh no, you're conspiring against the yeah. king. Called him a traitor, and uh, in front of Sansa, uh, arrested him. Jailed him Put for him a while. In jail. A dungeon. Uh, Arya escaped. Um, and was living on the streets. And uh, then it came time for sentencing. And he was told. And Sansa he, convinced her begged. dad to beg and apologize and say that he was not a traitor. He was all for the king, the new king. Then he messed up about and he the apologized. Kingdom. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and, and this was and, supposed, by doing that, he was supposed to have his life spared. Yes, he was going to be spared. And but Joffrey was the acting king at the time. Joffrey being the psychopathic piece of shit he was, uh, he Don't publicly inbreed. executed him and cut his head off in front of both of his daughters. And then... Uh, Pretty much enslaved Sansa with threat of death and bodily harm by not only him, but his mother, to where her entire family thought she turned on them. Mm -hmm. Her sister included. Um, I will say this I don't think Joffrey ever fucked her. 
No. He jo- Joffrey was just psycho. He did, he wasn't looking to get his rocks off. Yeah. We meet uh, Tywin. Tywin. Tywin meet, Lannister. Yeah, we meet Tywin. Uh, um, and he says uh, to Tyrion, yeah, well, I'm supposed to be the Hand of the King, my grandson. Uh, but I've got shit to do, so you go do it. Because they're in the middle, they're starting a war because Rob Stark has heard about his dad's death and they're starting, they're literally going to war with the Lannisters. All of the houses in the north that had sweared loyalty to House Stark had come together and named Rob... King of the North. Which really um, pissed off the Lannisters. The really pissed off the Lannisters. So they started an all-out war. Pretty much a new North versus South Well, then there's and then there's civil war. And then there's the Baratheons who joined the war. Uh, the two brothers who... Yeah, the two uh, brothers, and they fight each other. The oldest of the three Baratheon brothers, who was originally supposed to be king but didn't want it, now wants to be king, killed his younger brother uh, by way of a uh, witch. By, well, um, you're you're putting it nicely. By a way of blood magic, this bitch had sex with the older what the older Baratheon brother, yes, the, whichever one and had sex with him, and then gave birth demon. to a demon piece of shit looking like black mist uh, a, stuff. A smoke a smoke demon. Yeah, which killed her brother. Who which uh, killed his brother? Killed his younger brother. Yes. In front of Caitlin. Caitlin. And of course, at that time, that's where the blonde gal, Brienne of Tarth. Yeah, Brienne of Tarth. She, uh, she was, she was sworn. She was sworn to uh, this the the younger Baratheon. <laughs> Watched him die and then she, swore she, revenge. She loved him. Yeah. Um. So then she swore her allegiance to Caitlyn, um, to be her protector. Uh, it, it was pretty much a life oath. Yeah. Um. So they escaped. Yeah, the younger Baratheon, yeah. his men thought that Brienne of Tarth killed him, and they were after them. So, Caitlyn and Brienne of Tarth took the fuck off. They got out of there. Let's see. Stannis Baratheon, the oldest brother, decides he wants to take the throne for himself and tries to invade King's Landing by sea, uh, which he is met with force and uh, by... Tyrion, Lannister, yeah. and the King's Landing army. Well, even even After Joffrey the fucking King, tucks tail and leaves. Yeah. yeah, because his mother wanted him saved. Well, no, it wasn't just that. I mean, come on. There's the point where where they're talking. Like the guys, like I think it was the cousin that went and got him, and and he's like, "You need to come back. You need to be safe." And he, yeah, Joffrey didn't fight it. He's just like, "Oh yeah, I, I like for a second. He's like, oh, no, I need to be out here. No, no. You know what?" I'm naming, and he, he names his, whoever the the guy was that was next to him, like some big dude that didn't last long. I'm naming you charge of this battle, fight in the name of your king, yada yada, and just beats feet and gets the fuck out of there. Which, he also gives him orders to try and kill Tyrion. Yeah. Because none of the Lannisters care for Tyrion. Except for Jamie. Yeah. Except for Jamie. Except for Jamie. Jamie loves his, for, his brother. So, while the, the battle of the... Uh, the Blackwater is happening. Mm-hmm. Um, on the other side of the Narrow Sea, Daenerys Targaryen is uh, trying to bring up, a- uh, create a ginormous army of her own. Well, to it's, it's more her brother. Worcester. It's more her brother at this point. At this point, it's more her brother trying to do this. In fact, her brother even promises her to Aquaman for uh, for 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 his army. Why, why, why are you making that face? Why are you making that face? Am I wrong? Tell me I'm wrong. That is Jason Momoa. That is fucking Aquaman. Yeah, but he did this before he did. I talked to fish. I don't care. I talked to fish. But he did a good job. And Danny's brother is selling her for like to get this, to get this, to get the Iron Throne back because it originally belonged to the, Tar- to the Targaryens. And there's that's really cool because there's. A lot of lore there. They're giving us lore. It's not it did, the the story didn't just start with Ned Stark and and the Lannisters. It just there there's a whole shit ton of stuff, and they talk about like sigils and all sorts of stuff while the kids are learning. Yeah. 
And that, I mean, it, it's all the shit you want to learn, you want to hear about. It's like everything in, good in a video game. <laughs> he basically gives him to the Aquaman, and he takes her as his bride. And this is a point where, like, there's sex scenes there as he's just fucking her like a dog. He's just taking what's his. And then there's a scene where she starts kind of like... I don't want to say taming him. She's kind of... She's westernizing him. Yeah, she's she's kind of... Westerosing him. God damn it. She's kind of... She's kind of... <laughs> well, she's kind of like... And she gets this handmade kind of gal that's like, you know, how do I... And she was a prostitute or some shit, and she's pleased many men, and basically gets these pointers from her. One of the things she says is, you need for guys like that, you need to be on top. You need to... Show them that you can't just be pushed around, you know, show... You need to be the dominant one in the bedroom. You, yeah, Pretty the bedroom is her, her tips on how to pleasure a man. R- writing the schlong 101. <laughs> I like that. There needs to be a book that says that. Writing the schlong 101. So she ends up doing that, more or less. And it's it's kind of an interesting scene because you can see he's like, Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> you don't just... I don't just talk to fish anymore. Now I fuck you while you ride me. And it, that's great. So they, you can see the bonding, and they actually care for each other. They, like, start loving each other. You know, it's not just an arranged marriage. He kind of gets to see, like, how her brother... What's her brother's name? What's Viserys. Viserys. She, he got to, yeah, he got to see how Viserys treated her, and he started not like... I mean, he doesn't like it. He treated her like a whore. Khal Drogo. Effectively, the king of his people. The yeah. The most fearsome warrior in a pretty much a barbarian civilization yes he had never been beaten when they be and that's just, that's more lore for you they have they grow their hair out and they're like in ponytails kind of thing and if you lose you, you cut the you get your hair cut off you get that and his hair was off. like four foot long what what killed him huh dehydration <laughs> that's funny dehydration aquaman <laughs> Um, you like, you like yeah, I like it. that. You get a golf clap for that. Uh, the brother, you saw, if you says name, I already forgot. I don't care about that character. He's a piece of shit. So he basically, like, Drogo more or less gets more and more into Daenerys. And they fall in love. You know, they, she gets pregnant. And there's this one scene where, like, she, he, Tro, Drogo's done. He's done with that, that long, long blonde-haired man lady uh, that is her mm-hmm. brother. And, uh... He's, he's like, he more or less throws a fit in front of Drogo and says, oh, you promised me a crown. You promised me this. You promised me an army. Da, 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 da. Just going ape shit like you, you and know. And that's after laying hands on Daenerys. He more or less tells her, okay, he more or less tells her brother, okay, I promised you a crown. Gets all this gold, puts it in this pot, lets it melt, and pour the fucking smelted gold over his head. And that was probably and, the first yeah. death that I was happy about in this series. Like it, I was it, was, it was so good you could see his skull melting in from the weight of the gold. Yeah. Well, let's talk about what's his name dying about Drogo. Daenerys is pregnant with Drogo's son, or they they say it's a son. It's going to be the man who the rides the white stallion or or the world stallion or something like that right yeah the the world stallion yeah which in which his tribe is all about horses like that's their religion yeah they <laughs> they are the the horse people yes more what what happens is one of his guys basically like says hey she's controlling you you're being yoko uno you're, you're being a bitch yeah yeah he's you're you're letting her control you stop being a bitch they just took a bunch of slaves Yes. Remember, they just took over a, uh, like a town and a city or whatever, and took a bunch of slaves over. And Daenerys is all about not having slaves. She she wants everyone to be free. So she's telling Drogo, "Hey, let's not do that. Then put them all under my care." Yada yada yada. The guy doesn't like that. He wants to fuck one of the girls. They're trying to literally rape one of the gals. So they have a fight. Drogo comes in, and then they have they end up having to fight over her. He gets attacked, cut across his chest. That festers. <laughs> One of the gals there is a, a healer, right? An older an older gal is a healer, and more or less she goes to that uh, much later after it gets the the festering gets bad, and he falls off his horse, which is a really bad sign for those people. Like they don't look at you the same way if you if you're so sick you fall. If you can't stay on your horse, you can't be a leader, right? Yes. So <laughs> you you are just dis- you 
have lost your honor. So he fell off his horse, and so she gets desperate, gets this this gal, to, this the gal from the, sla- the that they took as slaves, to go heal this guy. Well, little did she know, she wasn't really healing him. She wasn't helping him at all. She he, he became a vegetable. He became a vegetable, more or less, after what she did. Like, and by doing what she did, like she talked, sacrificed, she sacrificed the, baby. the baby, so she no longer could have that kid. And uh, so Drogo became a vegetable, and she more or less killed him. And before a little before that, the whole clan left. Like she had no. That was that was season one. As a wedding gift, um, she was given three petrified dragon eggs. So once most of the the horse clan uh, decided that she they they did not want to follow the. Um, wife of a dishonored rider. She decided, okay, well, all my life I've been told I'm a dragon. Fire cannot hurt me. And I know that dragon eggs have to be born of fire. And then she's burning the witch that killed him as well. Yeah, yeah. She burnt She burnt the witch a lot. Yeah. Um, at the stake, at the foot of uh, Cal Drogo's uh, you know, bur- burning ape. She goes, she asked the witch, why did you do this? Why did you do this? And she goes, you know, these people burnt down my temple, the the god I worship, and, I, and you know, you didn't stop them before they raped me. They raped me like five times prior. You know, and when, when she went to burn them, she, one of the things she says is, I'm not going to scream. So Daenerys grabs these three dragon eggs and under protest from her you know, her advisor, she walks into the fire with these eggs Mm -hmm. and the flames engulf her. So her advisor and, and a bunch of the others sit and wonder and, you know, they're crying and, you know, daybreak comes and her advisor is kind of looking and, it's like DBZ She's style. Something. The smoke, yeah. The smoke like clears, and then she walks out, and and she stands up, covered in soot, clothes completely burnt off, not a scratch on her. Which, by the way, she looks good naked. And uh, she's holding a baby dragon, and then one climbs up over her left shoulder, and the other climbs up over her right shoulder, and no. everyone that stayed in support of her bowed to her yes and she became the dragon queen the mother of dragons mother of dragons and that title grows over time that title becomes like 20 different titles at one point breaker of chains and we'll get to that that was the end of season one but we'll get so we'll get to that i think we'll end it here there's gonna be a, a part two to this um maybe even a part three. maybe even a part three because this is game of thrones guys uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Remember to stay nerdy. And stay sexy. Always. always. Fluffy, wiener, fluffy, wiener, fluffy, wiener, fluffy wiener, fluffy wiener, fluffy wiener, fluffy wiener. That's how I'm going to end it.